Hello there. Now, a lot of people have been posting on Facebook and wherever that, oh, I wish I had a French press or I wish I had a pour over. Where can I get one now? Uh, so I wanted to try and make coffee in a way that you didn't need any of those things. Uh, so what we have today is we have about 22 grams of coffee. So if you have a scale, you can do that or it's about two tablespoons. I have a ball jar, a mason jar, and then I have another receptacle. In this case, it's a empty uh, French press carafe, uh, but you can really use anything. So coffee, mason jar, and then this carafe from a French press. It doesn't need to be a carafe, it can be another ball jar, but we're just using it because it's what we have. Also on the table, we have the folded dishcloth, which we are gonna use in place of an oven mitt, just pretending like we don't have an oven mitt. And the other thing we need is spoons. We need two spoons. Let's make some coffee. The first uh, thing that you do is you put in coffee into your ball jar. And then we're gonna add hot water fresh off the boil. So I'm gonna go to the kitchen and get the kettle. Bam! All right, so now we have our kettle. This is a Thompson kettle. Uh, you can get it at any uh, SM or Lazada or something. Fresh off the boil, as hot as possible, and we are going to pour the water in. Now, we're estimating that this is going to be at the ratio of about uh, 12 parts water for every one part of, of coffee. I'm just going to keep on spinning this just so that all of the coffee gets wet. Now, why are we using this 12 to 1 ratio? Well, that's because immersion is a less efficient way to make coffee than drip techniques like a V60 or a percolator. I'm going to fill this all the way up to the, to the rim. And this is similar to a method we use for, for tasting coffee. It's called cupping. So now that this is full, we're going to wait for about three and a half minutes for the coffee to brew. Now, while we're waiting for that, let me tell you a bit about our coffee for today. This is, uh, this is our standard coffee at Hanuko Manila. It's called DC7 and DC stands for daily coffee. It's our attempt to make what's called an Omni Roast and it uses coffee from Colombia, from Guatemala a place called Weiwei Wei Tenango, which is one of our favorite places to get coffee, and uh, Northern Philippines. So it's all uh, very, very ethically sourced and roasted to what we call an omni-roast, or our attempt at an omni-roast, which means a coffee that is roasted for espresso, for drip, for, uh, for immersion, and even cold brew. Uh, so it actually makes for really great cold brew when ground very fine. Uh, so today we're using a kind of medium coarse grind. Uh, usually it should be as coarse as possible uh, for this method. So whatever you have, it should be okay. So what we're doing is we're just using spoons and cups and dishcloth. And you know, this is like a very, very cheap cup. This is like from a gift uh, where the, the strainer just isn't there anymore. And you just end up with these random things around the house. So we're gonna make coffee with all this random stuff. All right, so three and a half minutes, we're going to take one of the spoons and we're going to agitate the top. And not too much agitation, just enough. Ooh, take a whiff. So that little bit of agitation uh, is going to cause a lot of the coffee that went to the top and formed the crust to sink down. So what happened was while the coffee was brewing, a lot of the carbon dioxide and bubbles and gases that are built up inside of the coffee uh, came out. And as they come out, they form this crust on top. So we want to break that crust and get as much of the coffee to sink down. Now some of the coffee will float on top. And uh, that is usually because the density of that particular piece of ground coffee is different. And so those are extracting at a different speed from everything else. So we're going to take our second spoon now and we're going to remove all of the stuff that's floating on top. Let me know when you get back. Let me know, let me get that. You gotta put it in forward. Don't act like you've never been chauffeur. All 
Alright, looks like we've gotten everything. So I'm gonna put the spoons aside. Then I'm actually gonna put these over here on the other table. And let's bring these guys both to the center. Now it's obviously it's a best effort basis. Like there are gonna be some bits that are floating on top. I can remove them later. Uh, but the reason why I want to remove those bits is once that they come out of the, uh, they don't go into this carafe. Some will inevitably get in there. But now that most of the coffee has settled down at the bottom of this ball jar and it's got a nice shape that's gonna that's going to just remove the liquid off the top. What we want to do is we want to separate the liquid from the ground so that it stops extracting. All right, so we poured the coffee from here into there. And what we did is we left the liquid that's right on top of the rest of the, of the grounds here in the original ball jar. And the reason why is because uh, it's very difficult to pour that out without the coffee, the grounds going from there into there. So that's it. Now you have, this is about 300 uh, ml of brewed coffee. And so now let's taste our coffee. There you go. Perfect. So that makes about two cups of coffee uh, in a nice little uh, regular sized coffee cup like this. Uh, so basically you get about 300 ml of coffee out of, a, out of this ball jar. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. We got it right off the boil, so this coffee is very hot. I'll be able to taste it a bit better as it cools, but right now, I think it tastes pretty okay. Uh, on a scale of one to 10, I would give this maybe a uh, 7.5 or seven. That's pretty good. If you have any questions, please do uh, ask in the comment sections below or send me a DM. Follow me, I am at KO Kosha on Instagram. Do follow Honeycomb Manila on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, we have a lot of coffee-related content there as well in our Daily Drink Mag uh, feed. So we have on Instagram, it's at Daily Drink Mag, www.dailydrinkmag.com. Of course, my personal Instagram is at KO Kosha. So please follow me and follow Honeycomb and uh, have a safe quarantine, folks. I wish you all good health. Peace.